Welcome to Gushen Bistro, created to showcase the great talents of our estate chef Martin and beautiful wines from Gushen Vineyards. My name is Maria, I'm Salivar Sommelier, WCT Advanced and Salivar Specialist to Wine, but even more important, I have a great passion for wine and food from all over the world. Today we are featuring one of my favorite countries, uh, known for an amazing cuisine. We are traveling to Mexico. And I cannot wait to taste all these delicious dishes that Marty is cooking today. So Marty, tell us more about the menu. Well, we have some interesting things today. We have a little ceviche, which is basically fish cooked in lemon juice. We're going to have, uh, I'm gonna make some little Mexican rice because a couple of dishes will go well with that. We're gonna do um, a grilled chicken that's gonna be finished in a little mole sauce. Uh, we are not making the mole sauce. That takes like three, that takes like a full day and. A lot to make it. All the work. All the work all on that, that one. Uh, we're going to have what's something called a Mexican pizza, which is something I found in um, when I was in um, Scottsdale a couple of weeks ago, and just like was amazing. It's everything I love in Mexican food, uh, all in one dish. It's got some chorizo, some cheese, uh, some salsa, tomatoes. God knows what else. We're going to make some guacamole. Uh, guacamole. We have some chips over there. A little salsa, uh, pico de gallo, and we're just going to have some interesting. Uh, lighter dishes on the Mexican cuisine. I mean, I find Mexican cuisine to be really rustic. Um, it was described by one of our uh, colleagues here as a working man's cuisine, which is a really good way of doing it. Uh, one of the other things about a lot of Mexican cuisine, it requires a lot of time to make a lot of the things. Uh, so some of the things we're doing here are actually compressed, so we can do it for you on the, ca on the counter, but uh, things like carnitas, which I really like. Oh, that takes like all day to make it right. Um, the, um, I had something I had a, a ranchero steak with a poblano chimichurri, which I'm going to make one of these years. That sounds really good, but that takes um, it takes a while to make these things. They're into marinades, they're into chilies, uh, and a lot of different vegetables and combinations that are not really common uh, to the European um, uh, palate. So we have here, for instance, cilantro. We have some chopped jalapeno pepper, chopped tomatoes, a little chopped onion, some green onion. We have a little chopped red pepper. These are poblano chilies that I roasted. Mm -hmm. We peeled them. Uh, they're going to go on a couple of the things here. And here uh, we have pickled Over there we got pickled pickles. jalapeno that's going to go into mm -hmm. the, the ceviche. We have a little chorizo with um, chorizo mm. that's been sauteed a little bit of onion for our pizza, a little bit of jack cheese with habanero peppers in it. Nice. Really should like that. Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, here we have um, uh, shrimp and the scallops that are marinating in a, in a lime juice. Now, so let's go. We're gonna, first thing we're going to do is we're going to start the rice. It's going to take about a half hour to make, so let's get it going. And we would also like to invite you to stay after the show and uh, join a wine conversation with our um, wine educator, Robert Fisher. So he'll be happy to answer any questions you might have about the wine. And where are we starting? So we're going to start with a little bit of rice. Mm -hmm. um, Mexican rice is almost a, a cliche. Mm. The thing that's really interesting is how do you get the rice red? Mm -hmm. I mean, we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago. Luis, one of our colleagues here, bought his mom's Mexican rice. It was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I'll show you the trick on how you get your Mexican rice red. It's an easy dish to cook. Uh, it just takes a little time. And after you cook it, you will never buy the box version again. And it's a great side dish to anything, and really. It, it goes really well. Uh, you'll find recipes for all these things on our website www.bushane.com. Um, it's somewhere on there. Okay, starting with arroz a la mexicana. And so, what is so great about Mexican food, I would say that even the same dish, uh, you know, in the different parts of Mexico will taste different. This cuisine there is very regional. First, we have a coastal parts like Veracruz, 400 miles of the coast. So definitely it's not a surprise that the, the core of their cuisine is the seafood, but they also have influence from, uh, from Spain. So you get it Mediterranean ingredients like olives, uh, capers. But then if you go inland, uh, you know, you'll get a little dishes more focused on uh, chicken, uh, goat, uh, pork. 
Then we have Oaxaca, which is known as the land of seven mole, the best mole. And we are lucky here to work with Luis, whose family originates from Oaxaca, so we get the best ingredients, starting with delicious mole too. What is your favorite uh, cuisine from Mexico? Part of maybe the dish? That's a tough question. Uh, I've only been to the uh, coastal regions of Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, and had a lot of fish dishes in those. And, uh, Acapulco, Zihuatanejo, Puerto Vallarta. A lot of mariscos, which is yep. seafood, right? And uh, what are you doing with the rice? What kind of rice are you choosing first? It's, it's just a regular, regular long grain converted rice, mm -hmm. um, which is easy to find. It's not like when you make a Spanish or a uh, Italian dish, we want to get either the bombas rice or the Arborio Arborio rice. Mm -hmm. Just regular long grain white rice. Do you know California is the largest rice producer in the world? Wow, that's amazing. I just yeah. found that out recently. I, just, I thought that was really interesting. So what we're doing now is we're going to sweat off the onions. Uh, you got the camera there. Let's go take a look. We have the onions in there with uh, with some of our with a couple of cloves of garlic, whole garlic. So you're caramelizing the onions, right? Yeah, you're going to want to soften the onions up. Mm -hmm. They already smell very good. Yeah. I would hope so. So while that's cooking, I'm going to start something else here. Mole sauce is kind of interesting. What we're going to do here is we're going to take a little, uh, I have some grilled, some grilled chicken here. I marinated with lime juice, got a little lime juice in it right now. I uh, grilled it a couple minutes ago. What we're part gonna, of the chicken did you use? Just chicken breast. Mm -hmm. You can use, you can use the chicken thigh. Mm -hmm. You can use whatever you want, whole chickens. And I'm just going to put a little stock in here. We're going to heat it up. And then what we're going to do to finish it, we're going to hit some of the mole sauce in there. Then we're just going to stick it in the water. We'll plate it later. Sounds great. A little great. bit of the rice. And then a little bit about the mole. And mole, it's really, there are a lot of different kinds of mole, green. But we, let's say the most uh, common one will be the, the chocolate mole. And chocolate, it's not sweet. It's made from a more uh, high uh, content of cocoa, right? But Moloch has up to 50 ingredients. So we'll find herbs, seeds, a lot of different dried chilies. I did a Moloch class. It took us three hours to make it. All in words um, and amazing. And often made with pork or chicken. Do you do you have any favorite you kind can of Moloch? You make actually from pumpkin seeds, which I've made it from. Mm -hmm. uh, chocolate, which is what we're going to use today. Uh, it can be made from, but the thing is, is usually it's a lot of peppers that are cooked really slowly together, a lot of elements. I mean, I believe on the chocolate mole one, I made like five or six different types of peppers in them. Yes, and, and as I said, we use up to 50 ingredients, a lot of herbs and spices. It's very complex. Oh, for sure. So our, our, our rices, our, um, our onions are in the process of cooking. They're almost done. What we're going to do at the end, the big trick here with this this dish, and the technique is really similar to how French cook their mm -hmm. rice, is they add a little, is that they, they saute vegetables, and then they add their rice toasted, and then stock, and maybe whatever other flavoring elements at that point. We're going to add peas and carrots, mm -hmm. serrano peppers. Nice. Uh, we're going to put in a, some serrano peppers, peas and carrots, and... It'll cook down and be absolutely delicious. Perfect. So that's good. We'll throw this in. This is the critical stuff. Critical stuff here. So you're kind of roasting uh, the same like when you make risotto or paella. You always want to roast your rice you wanna, a little bit, right? That's correct. You wanna you wanna toast your rice, get a little color in it, and it also by toasting it allows the flavors to become more incorporated in the rice because it like it like um, softens the outer shell of the kernels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll let that toast for a couple of minutes while that's toasting. I'm gonna stir that up in there. I had mm -hmm. I had mole with duck a couple of months oh. ago. So it's really good. And you can use any, you can use pork as well. So basically the yeah. process is the same. Same process. 
And if you buy mal already pre-made, you want to actually uh, kind of mix with the, the broth as well, right? You have to mix with mm -hmm. broth. And it's, it's amazing how um, absorbent oil it is. Okay, so. Rice is toasting here. We take a little bit of tomato puree. This is a puree mm -hmm. of um, three tomatoes. So that would be the secret ingredient, what it makes rice red, right? You puree does. tomatoes. Stir it in, and we're going to cook it dry. And you want the riper tomatoes. That will bring the kind of sweetness, right? You got that right. Well, I use Roman tomatoes because mm -hmm. Roman tomatoes have more flesh on them. Yeah, they're great for the sauces and, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to cook that dry. So when are you going back to Mexico, Maria? I cannot wait, hopefully soon. Um, last time I was in Jalisco, we were doing tequila tour and the street food in Mexico was amazing. Oh, yeah. But as I said, before that I was in a coastal area in Yucatan and Merida and the coastal it's as well delicious. A lot of nice ceviche and I feel like they use the little spicy version uh, in, a, in a Yucatan, a lot of habanero. Also oh. has a little tropical touch when you have ceviche there, it has coconut milk. So I really love their, their cuisine. Really Very Mayan influenced. And Last time I was in Mexico, we went to uh, we were San Jose del Cabo. Went to a place called Don Sanchez Restaurant. And what they did um, is they took Mexican street food and it elevated it. And it was really, really interesting. I mean, they made, made a taco for pork belly. Mm. Um, I know you're going to love this. They had grilled octopus with mango sorbet, which was really good. Yeah, the pool place. Tostada was out of this world. So it was... Uh, Place okay. I haven't been in Sabaca, California. I would love to go to Ensenada, and that's the wine region there as well. Why so is it with a lupe? Mm -hmm. As you can see, that's absorbed. So now we're going to take some stock. We'll put the stock in. Carrots. You know what? I'm going to cut these in half and put them in. Just get a little bit more flavor. And depending, depends how spicy you like, you can change the peppers as well, right? You can use any pepper you want. I like serranos. Uh, if you want to smoke your flavor, jalapenos. Um, you can actually use chipotles too if you want to. That's smoked jalapenos. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna throw those in. Oh, you're putting the peas. That's something different. Oh, you see peas in, uh, little peas in. Peas and carrots, got to have your vegetables yeah. with your mm -hmm. dish. We're going to bring that to a boil. So we're turn the heat up. And then when it boils, we're going to bring it down to a simmer. So meanwhile... Okay, we are making the mole now. We're going to put a little bit of mole sauce into, into the liquid. The thing about mole, man, it, it, just, it just drinks liquid. Okay, and you're putting slowly, spoon by spoon, right? Not everything at the same time. Yeah. And it thickens up. It smells really good. I'm looking forward to taste with the uh, with, um, Bouchain Syrah later. I think the chocolatey notes and the richness really match well. Oh. I'm gonna take that off the flame. Put the flame down. And we're gonna put this in our little holder here. Either warm, and we'll okay. come back to that later. Perfect. And rice, we're just waiting that to be cooked. Basically, rice is prepared. Do you add any spices? Um, you can put a little salt and pepper in salt it. Salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. I also like the version when it's done, right? To uh, sprinkle with some fresh herbs like oregano, really brings nice, uh, nice uh, aroma. You can, uh, you can put a, what the Mexicans call herbal bueno, which mm -hmm. is, uh, which is basically uh, mint. Mint, yeah, that brings freshness as well. I mean, it depends on the area of Mexico you're from. I'm not as into, I'm not as familiar with Mexico regional cooking as you are. Uh, 
You just need to book another trip to Mexico, and that's the best way to learn. Yeah, I mean, that's like, like I said, we've been to the, we've been to the Puerto Vallarta, Mazalan, um, La Paz, La, you know, Cabo area, Zihuatanejo, love Zihuatanejo. We went to a beach in Zihuatanejo, and it was a beach bar, you know, all the beaches in Mexico have all these bars on them. And the guy said, you want to sit at our beach? He has lunch today, and it was some, like, flipping uh, sea bream that he just caught in the, uh, in the ocean. That convinced us to have lunch, to sit at his place and have that for lunch. So, our rice is almost boiling. Okay. Our guacamole, our, whoa, our mole sauce is done. Let's, shall we take a look at ceviche? Yes. So, ceviche is something dish that you can really be creative. Uh, we chose uh, shrimp and uh, scallops, but you can do any really kind of white fish. Um, Calamari will work as well. So we're going to take out the fish. And this is just the lime juice, right? Just lime juice. Mm -hmm. Now, the directions in the um, in the web, in the, um, in the recipe? recipe that I sent on the website says for 15 minutes in the lemon juice. You're going to need more like 30 minutes. Just, uh, but you can see actually the shrimp changed the color, so it's already kind of cooking yeah, with a, with acidity from the lime juice. It's basically the acidity does all the work for you mm -hmm. on this. Um, I've had I had some issue all over Mexico. And, and yeah, as we said, it's very it's very different depending where you're having. They're all delicious, but different. And I do if you like kind of tropical note, I will add coconut milk as well. That gives a kind of richness and creamy texture too. So we. Separate this out. We're going to mm -hmm. come back to this in a minute. So I get all this fish out. So we're going to make basically So I'm going to pour off oh, about two tablespoons worth of this juice. We're going to use it again. That's good. Excuse me. Pour the rest of this out. Now, to show you how to cut a how to cut a an avocado. Most people have real problems with this. Let's show you how we used to do it in the restaurants. You take it, get your knife, you go around in a circle. Twist it. Out comes the... Uh, that is so efficient. You, you never had to do a... You know how to cook a case of guacamole well, through a case of uh, yeah, it's avocados a, at one time. So, and then carefully, mm -hmm. you like this. You might want to use a paring knife if you're not comfortable with a chef's knife, but you don't want to go through the skin. As you go through the skin, it goes through your skin. That's not good. And then you just scoop it out. Really similar, like uh, you can cut a, a mango the same way because mango can, can be very challenging to cut, but with the right methods, it's easy. You used to have to do cases of mango too. <laughs> you know the trick with the glass? Uh, no, I don't actually. So actually, I learned that in a, in a Mexican cooking class. So you will slice the piece of mango and you take the glass with a very thin edge and you just uh, kind of, uh, you know, swipe it down and you get a whole piece of mango in your glass and skins in your head. That's interesting. I have to try, yeah, have to try that one. Yeah. There we go. Guacamole. So I'm going to take mm. approximately about a quarter of an onion. I'm going to take jalapeno. Be generous with jalapenos, okay? You can put more in. A little bit of cucumber. Pickle jalapeno. There you go. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Cilantro. Yes, always more cilantro. Olive oil, talcum olive oil yeah. made on our, on our estate. Yeah, we have 3,000 uh, olive trees here on the property and we make really delicious talcum olive oil. How would you describe it? I would say really robust, Sweet. but fruit forward. Mm -hmm. We're gonna mix that, then you take those two teaspoons of lemon juice. Lime, it's I would say lime more juice. common, right? Lime juice. Now, lime I, on it's so European and lime it's so Mexican, right? The other thing also, 
is that you might want to use a red onion as opposed to a mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to a white onion. I think that would add more color. And they're a little sweeter, kind of in a flavor, right? I think they have a different flavor, yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Right, we're going to put the fish back in. Pepper. What I love about Mexican food is also colors. Oh. They're never boring. Like they always a lot of colors. And we're gonna mix this it all up. It just looks inviting. It smells so fresh too. Mm -hmm. That was sick. Oh, I'm going to take now for those of you who want to know the difference between cilantro and and parsley. So they do look alike. You look at parsley, you got pointed leaves. This is a Italian parsley, which is one I usually use to cook with. And if you take a leaf of cilantro and a leaf of parsley, you look at them, the leaf of cilantro is a little softer, it's a little harder, more rounded and less pointed. Kind of different color, it's a little, a little lighter. I'm going to take a little bit of the cilantro. And oh, that looks amazing. Okay. It kind of makes me to imagine I'm on some beach in Mexico. There you go. Again, a little bit of uh, pepper on there. Am I looking for Yes. Oh, I can see that with the Riesling. Oh, yes. It will be perfect. And we're going to just put a little lime on top for a little garnish very colorful perfect i want to get Beautiful. a bathing suit out and uh, head to the beach now and just you know there you go get the margaritas Looks beautiful <laughs> we already have the lime juice so <laughs> okay after you're done, let's see our rice is boiling. Mm -hmm. Turn it down. And we're going to cover it. Give it a stir. You probably need 15, 20 minutes for the rice, right? It takes about a half hour mm -hmm. uh, to cook it. Again, um, I'm not one for time because I use it as a guide and I'll use it uh, to set a timer. In kitchens, we use timers basically remind us that something's in the oven. Or simply until it's done, as Marty says. Yeah. <laughs> I know, she, she goes crazy over that. Okay. All right. So let's talk about Mexican pizza. One of my, I was in Phoenix area in Scottsdale and I had this and I said, it's everything I love about about a uh, about Mexican food all in one dish. Hey, how, how could you compare? So we have a lot of uh, Mexican cuisine in Upper Valley, of course, and there is a lot of Mexican food in uh, Arizona. How would you compare these two? That's an interesting question. Um, if you would ask me about Mexican cooking in Santa Fe and Mexican cooking here, mm -hmm. I'd give you a real good answer. The thing in Santa Fe, which is interesting, is that it's an indigenous Mexican community. Uh, Mexicans have lived there since for a 15, long time. Since mm -hmm. 1500s. And um, they developed what the hatch chilies, um, the red and green chili sauce that, that's ubiquitous in that particular area. You'll find some of that in Arizona. Arizona, I found to be kind of like transient type of Mexicans. Well, I really couldn't put my finger on it. Whereas when I was in uh, New Mexico and in San Antonio, I found it was like San Antonio, the cooking Mexican was really earthy. And I found in New Mexico use a lot of blue corn, blue, blue corn tortillas, corn blue corn is everywhere. Yes, very much, and a lot of red and green chili. Green chili, exactly. So we're gonna put some. This is a jack cheese. So when I was researching my trip to Mexico to Arizona, all the restaurants, or at least all the Mexican style restaurants, they did things like they call it cheese cheese crisps. Basically, a tortilla with cheese on it. And this particular restaurant called Los Olivos, across the street from Scottsdale Stadium, for those of you who are going to spring training, uh, it's right across the street. In fact, it's we, we, they were practicing. We were watching them practice from the outdoor tables. Um, they do this in the Mexican pizza. So this is what they do. They put on their their jack cheese. We're going to put it into the oven for a second um, to have it to have it melt. So that would be kind of fusion. Can we say Arizona has kind of Mexican fusion yeah, cuisine? Yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. way of putting it. Yeah. And what kind of tortilla you suggest? Always uh, flour a four, or corn? Fourteen-inch flour tortilla. Mm -hmm. 
And we chose some uh, really nice wines today to pair with uh, with our Mexican cuisine. We have a Vengri, which is rosé made of uh, Pinot Noir. Uh, we chose our Riesling that comes from Las Brisas Vineyard here in Carneros. Then we have a Las Brisas Vineyard again, but this is a Pinot Blanc. And we have a Hyde Syrah, also we can say premium vineyard here in Carneros for Syrah. Uh, and that one we are saving for mall and chicken, but uh, all other dishes will be paired with actually these chi wines. They're all light, very crisp. So what are we having here? We have a lot of flavors, so a lot of delicious food, but uh, with a lot of acidity, we have lime juice, we have a uh, spice. So we have a very complex uh, flavor profile here. So it can be challenging for the pairings if you go with the richer wines. That's why we choose lighter, crisp, bright, fresh wines. So, when you have cuisines like this, avoid any wines with a lot of oak aging, a lot of tannins, a lot of alcohol. So lighter wines will be your perfect choice. So while we're doing that, let's make some guacamole. Sounds great. This one you don't have to be so exacting. Mm -hmm. And we're you just, want because mm -hmm. we're just going to mash everything up. Perfect. Then you want a riper avocado, right? Yes. The riper the better. And you mm -hmm. want they got to be a little bit black on the outside, and they'll be soft. You can feel them. They're really hard, and you're out of luck. And when I was working in New York, we used to have real problems getting ripe avocados. Even you can put them in a paper bag for a couple of days. Now, when you're buying them by the case, yeah. you got to cut them up by the case. <laughs> then you that? just have to be patient until they ripen. There was nothing you can do about it. Okay, so let me get my. Hmm? So we're just going to take, peel them into the. Okay, I can uh, help with that. I put Maria to work here. She's going to mash. So I'm going to let her take care of that. I'm going to okay. go look at the rice. Let me try to mark this. Doesn't really come out that easy. I'll just do the traditional. And would you add any spices now or not? Oh, that's coming in. Mm -hmm. have to mash it up. I don't have this one. Take it out. Uh, you don't okay. do it with the knife. Uh, I tried. Actually, this one didn't come out easily. So I have to practice that. For so the next time, I'll be prepared. So why don't you mash those up? Mm -hmm. um. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to be ripe, right? So it's yeah, going to be easier. If it's not ripe, it's really difficult to mash these things. Trust me, I have done it. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised what we've done in restaurants. There are tricks to make them riper. To make Good thing customers never know about it. Well, you throw a little olive oil into it. That always works. <laughs> so while she's doing that, next thing. So what will be the next after this is done? Okay, we're going to take mm -hmm. jalapeno pepper. Okay. Perfect. Good amount. Mm -hmm. Take cilantro. A good amount. Lime juice. I'll let you work on that. How is pizza looking? Oh, nice. That cheese is all melted. So it yeah. took like really few minutes. Just doesn't take very long. Comes the fun mm. part. Okay, perfect. I think this is. Now you're going to get a spoon. Mm -hmm. Spoon 
you have to fold it. Mm -hmm. Take this out, and we're going to fold. Folding is. Mm -hmm. If you can show them so they can oh, see yeah. what they're doing, perfect. Fold it in here. Now we mm -hmm. need a little salt and pepper. Marie, why don't you get yourself a fork, Marie? You're going to tell me to salt and pepper. Okay, how's it mm -hmm. taste? Perfect. Okay. I will add a little more salt, but... A little more salt? Okay, that sounds like a plan. Oh, that's... Perfect. And always right, more so salt. we got a bowl for this to put it in. We got a bowl to put this in. Of course, what's guacamole oh, yeah. without chips? Nice. Oh, guacamole. Mm -hmm. We can kind of make it a little more round. So we take our pizza. Now comes the fun part. Smoked, roast, roasted poblanos. Any other peppers you recommend? Like a roasted poblano? Whatever you, whatever you want to use. Mm -hmm. I like poblanos. And of course, you use Mexican chorizo. Of course. A little chopped tomato. Oh, red pepper. That looks great. I have never had that version of. Mexican pizza. I never had it either until I was in the. I always like a little bit of this. Nice. Again, a lot of colors. Onion. Cilantro. Mexican pizza. Perfect. Now let's go get some of this stuff out of the way here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to work on our mole. How is the rice? So do you want to make rice al dente or do you want to really cook it well? I like it slightly al dente personally. Let's get a, let's get a plate for this. Mm -hmm. Let's put it over mm -hmm. here. And the more tomato uh, juice you put, it will be more red, right? That's correct. But there's plenty of tomato infused flavor in this. Mm -hmm. mm. Our kitchen smells amazing. That's nice. some rice. Mm -hmm. Here is the rice. So, mole is next. Let's get the plate out for mole. I just opened this up and the smell was amazing. And actually, we didn't take us that long. It was more about pre preparation, right? Making mise en place to work and slicing everything. But when you start cooking. It's not very long. So let's take a little bit of this, just for a little color. Okay. Always have gloves ready.
Maybe some other time we can make tamales. They're one of my favorites. What do you think about tamales, Martin? I love tamales. I made them to make. But I love them. <laughs> then we'll have to ask Louis' mom. She should be a guest for one of the next yeah, really. shows. Definitely. Her enchiladas are amazing. The place in uh, in Phoenix it has the best freaking enchiladas I've ever had outside of Mexico. Oops. All right, I'm going to put a little bit of this on top of it. And we have here a wine grilled chicken and mole sauce. Always good with a tortilla. Wrap it in the tortilla. A little bit of salsa and guacamole on it. You're, you're ready to go there. So, oh, we, are all... we need to try some wine with this stuff. That's now that's uh, my favorite part, tasting all the food and wine. After we made a mess out of everything, which one do you want to try first? Uh, so we ha let's start with the rosé. And uh, I'll start with ceviche. Rosé and ceviche. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me have your plate. And we can discuss here why not with Syrah, right? For sure. You know, and you can often hear pair seafood with the white wines, red meat with the red wine, and there is much more to consider what kind of seafood, right? Do we have delicate seafood? Like today we have a scallops, so you don't want really wine that can overwhelm it. But if you have a salmon, which is often grilled, it's richer fish, a lot of fat, you can go with lighter reds like Pinot Noir. But ceviche has Seafood also has a lot of lime juice, has all these kind of, of fresh acid. ingredients, a lot of acid. So you want to look for the wines that light and the brighter seed as well. Um, and when we do the pairings, we taste the wine first. I cheated, I already tasted the rosé. That's okay. There is no, this is just an advice, so it doesn't By mean you have to follow. Um, there's a little bit of heat at the end of this. What flavors do you find in a, in a mangri? Mangri? Mm -hmm. I get a little strawberry, some uh, some cherry fruit. Kind of pink grapefruit, a lot of citrus, and I think that's really matching nice with the citrusy flavors from ceviche as well. Get the chips out. And it's really beautiful pairing. A very nice pairing. Also go really well with Riesling too. Riesling, it's pretty universal pairing. I don't know actually any food that would not match Riesling. That's true. Especially because nice minerality. And you if you're in Mexico, right? You're going to pair with uh, enjoy the local food. There's uh, that coastal, uh, you know, the, the white wine from Mexico got a lot of that uh, ocean influence and the soil. It has a lot of chalk, a lot of minerality in the wines. I think that will really go well with all the seafood dishes there. You have your plate there, Maria? So again, this is like everything I love about Mexican food in one dish. Chorizo, melted cheese. So that will go really well with rosé, but also Riesling and Pinot Blanc. Great with the Pinot Blanc. Absolutely fantastic with the Pinot Blanc. And Pinot Blanc has a little bit of that kind of savory vegetal aroma. And then we have this roasted the peppers and a little richness from the cheese. So I think they, they both really pair well. Mm. Actually, even have And saltiness from chorizo brings really nice aroma from the wine as well. A lot of kind of pear, apples, stone fruits. Yeah. Citrus, lemon. I mean, you don't usually think of Mexican food with uh, with wine. There you is, think there about is the beer, right? Beer, margaritas. Yes. Things like that. But the thing is, is a really thriving wine industry in Ensalada. Um, previous employer where we worked, I had actually hosted a family who owned the winery. 
Oh, nice. It was interesting because they brought up some wine for the... Valle de la Guadalupe, a lot of great wineries in the, in the region, yeah. in Baja California. And you don't see many of those wines in this country. That's another reason to go back to Mexico and enjoy the local go. wine and food. Let me have your plate. Excuse my reach. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And for the Maui, we chose um, our Syrah. five winner Syrah. Really beautiful wine, cold, cold climate Syrah. Has a little oh, floral yeah. kind of violet lavender. There's also a lot of dark fruits like the blackberry. Plum spice, I think, um, kind of baking spices as well. You deal also think that, mm -hmm. with a very earthy dish here, mole. Yes, absolutely. I think it really matches well the the mole flavors. Also, a homage here to our wine crews and our uh, uh, seller, seller staff. Most of our seller staff and most of our vineyard staff are either from Mexico or from families that are from Mexico. And this food is also a homage to their staff because without them, we could not function here. Yeah, they're all, their hard work is behind all these beautiful wines. And the wines go really well with us. So, Next week, or next two weeks, we're going to be looking at the seasonal holidays, Passover. Next week, we're going to do a real interesting twist on it. And the week after, in honor of, of Easter and Maria, being from Serbia, we're going to do some dishes from Serbia. Very exciting. Yeah, Thank you. which I'm really excited to, to try. So stay tuned for Rob, uh, who's going to deal, who's going to talk through wine. Um, Any questions for us before yep. uh, Rob takes over? We're gonna say cheers. Have a good have a good day, and uh, Rob will be next. And thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, and see you next Sunday. Cheers. Cheers.